Today I'd like to talk to you about oral appliances. I'm going to show you different types of oral appliances that you can use in your practice. There's probably over a hundred different designs, but I use primarily three or four different, different types, and I'll show you my preferences. Um, what is really important is that in the January 2006 issue of the magazine called Sleep, the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, which are the pulmonologists, the sleep specialists, made the statement. So and this is in a medical journal, medical doctors and sleep specialists making the statement that oral appliances here are the first treatment option for mild obstructive sleep apnea and moderate obstructive sleep apnea. Okay, so this, this is a huge breakthrough. The American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, which are the dentists that do oral appliances, that organization has been around for at least 20 years. But I think for the first 15 years, they were just trying to get some credibility with the medical community. Now finally here in 2006, I believe the medical community is now embracing oral appliances and recognizing their importance in the treatment of patients with mild to moderate sleep apnea. Now I still feel and most general dentists believe the same, that for severe cases of sleep apnea, the CPAP device is the number one treatment option. And most medical practitioners, in fact, all medical practitioners believe in that too. I suggest that if you're gonna use these appliances, particularly if you're gonna get insurance companies to pay for these, that you use an FDA approved oral appliance. And most of the appliances I'm gonna show you today are FDA approved. The Somnomed appliance, as you can see right here, is probably my favorite appliance. It's, it's a two-piece appliance, and you've got a side screw here on both sides, so it's extremely important to put the appliance in and make it comfortable. If it's not comfortable, the patient won't wear it. That's why patients prefer oral appliances to CPAP devices, because CPAP devices, a lot of patients don't find them very comfortable. Again, if I had to make a, a statement regarding acceptance of CPAP devices, versus non-acceptance, I would say that the patients that are severe sleep apnics really do seem to adapt to their CPAP devices much better than patients who are mild to moderate. So I think that's why we really need to have oral appliances in the, uh, in the mix. As you know, there's three treatment options for obstructive sleep apnea. Number one would be CPAP for severe cases. Number two would be, for mild to moderate cases, oral appliances. And number three would be the surgical intervention. I'm going to be talking about all of those today. So that's the Sonomed appliance. I'll be, I'll be describing that in more detail later on, but it's basically a two-piece appliance. And I prefer a two-piece appliance so the patient can open and close, and it has to be adjustable or titratable, which means that if you make the appliance and the patient's end-to-end, -end, and they're still snoring and they still have sleep apnea, you're allowed to advance the mandible, or you're able to advance the mandible by turning those side screws slowly, and each turning of the side screw is a quarter millimeter. You turn it, say, twice a week, and so the patient gets two millimeters a month uh, advancement of the mandible. But we'll discuss that in a little more detail when we get to the Somnomed appliance. There's basically two types of appliances that uh, can be used as oral appliances. Number one, two big categories. Number one, the tongue retraining device, or the TRD. And you can see the photo of it here. What happens here, you move the tongue forward and the tongue goes into that bulb and you press the bulb and the tongue stays forward in the bulb. And that keeps the tongue forward. You use this on patients who can't have repositioning appliances. Very rarely can a patient not tolerate a repositioning appliance, but it does happen. So if the patient can't tolerate the repositioning appliance or they're an edentulous patient or, or periodontally involved teeth, then the TRD or tongue retraining device has been around for many, many years, and it's a, it's a possible appliance that you could use. The majority, the vast majority of patients, though, use the mandibular repositioning appliances. The repositioning appliances move the lower jaw forward, moves the tongue forward, and opens up the airway. So basically moves the jaw forward, which moves the tongue forward, which opens up the airway. And that's a picture of a dorsal appliance, an appliance that I've been using probably for 20 years. It's very similar in design to the new Somnomed appliance, which has been around for about 10 years. The dorsal appliance had no adjustments on the side. And you can see here that the, you have the interlocking um, area here, the, 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 
this large dorsal fin, I call it, interlocking here with the, with the back part, but you can't adjust that. If you want to adjust the dorsal appliance, you'd have to add acrylic to the mesial incline of that upper part, the back part, the most posterior part. Somnimid came along and put two screws there, so it's much easier to turn the screws than to have to add triad. Because as we found when we're, when we're adjusting appliances or titrating appliances, it's better to move them in small increments forward. So the side screws really are a big advantage over the dorsal appliance. There's the Somnimid appliance. And as I say, that's one of my favorites. And you can see these big dorsal fins here. I call them the dorsal fins. The patient, when, they're, when they lie back, the jaw falls back and the tongue falls back and blocks the airway. Remember, if it partially blocks the airway, it's snoring. If it completely blocks the airway for 10 seconds or more, it's called sleep apnea. Any more than five events an hour is, is obstructive sleep apnea. So you can see here are the side screws. And, and you see the arrow. So the patient will just put a little key in that, in that screw and just turn it all the way and then take it out. And that is what we use when we're trying to advance the mandible. So, and each turn, as I mentioned, is a quarter millimeter. And so you do two turns a week. So it's a half a millimeter a week and it's two millimeters per month. So very, very easy to adjust that appliance. They have different designs for these appliances. Some have ball clasps to hold them in. Sometimes you can have a dual laminate with a soft inside and a harder outside. Those are better for patients that are very sensitive. The only thing is the dual laminates don't last as long. So you can ask for whatever design you want. But it's ma mainly a mandibular advancement appliance. The upper and lower parts allow the patient to open and close easily. They open and close easily. I like a two-piece appliance. The mandible is held forward with interlocking buccal inclines, these two inclines. Allows for lateral movement. Patients who are bruxers and many, many patients who have snoring problems and have sleep apnea also brux. We feel they brux between sleep cycles and uh, they brux to open up their airway. So um, you need to have some lateral movement with these appliances. Otherwise, it's going to be very sore in the temporomandibular joint area. So these 15 millimeter inclines, as you can see, keep the mandible forward. You can see the mandible can't fall back because the front incline hits the back incline and they can't go back. The patient can open quite wide and they can't go back. The other thing you may want to consider is if you think the patient's coming out of their appliance at night, you may want to put on some elastics here, um, put a little hook on the upper and a hook on the lower and up and down vertical elastics to hold the pieces together. So that's also very effective. If you wanted to increase the vertical, if you wanted to increase the opening between the incisors, then you can add acrylic back here to the posterior part behind that distal incline right there. And again, the mandible can be advanced by turning those side screws. So you definitely want to have those big buckle inclines and you want to have those side screws as part of your design of the appliance. But this is a very comfortable appliance. Probably one of the most popular appliances in the world is the Somnimed. Now, you, you can have temporary appliances or permanent appliances. We generally want temporary, we want permanent appliances. But once in a while, if a patient loses their appliance, say a patient has severe sleep apnea and they lose their appliance or they break their appliance, you have to send it back for repairs. Well, you need to put a temporary appliance in for that patient because you need to protect their airway. What would happen if, they, if we were waiting two weeks to get the appliance back from the lab and the patient had a heart attack due to the high blood pressure and due to the apneic events? I mean, this wouldn't be good. So it wouldn't be good for your practice and not good for the patient. So you need to have some sort of a temporary appliance that we use. Now, this is another, this is one type that we have used called the silencer custom temporary appliance, sort of a boil and bite uh, temporary appliance, something like you'd get off the internet if you, if you wanted a temporary appliance. So again, some, some patients would, would need this to help control the obstructive sleep apnea while the permanent appliance is being fabricated. A replacement while it's being repaired or replaced if lost. So you must have some sort of a temporary appliance to protect the patient's airway. If you're treating the patient, you're treating the patient all the way. And if, if you always have to keep that airway protected. Of course, the permanent appliance, remember now, we're gonna go over this again, 
the diagnosis must be made by a sleep specialist. The patients must have a polysomnogram in either a hospital or a private sleep clinic. And the diagnosis made by the sleep specialist. They will send you a letter. When they send you a letter and give you the diagnosis, it's either mild, moderate, or severe, and they will give you the sleep study to show you how much time they spend in stage one, stage two, three, four, five, five being REM sleep. And um, that's very important to find that out. Okay, you must make an appliance that's titratable or adjustable. Okay, titratable and adjustable. You can't put an appliance in that you can't adjust because it's, it's Russian roulette then. How do you know you've got the right position? You have to get the right position, so, and, and you have to have something that you can modify. And you have to be able to alter it vertically, horizontally, and laterally. Now this is another appliance that I really like. This is called an EMA appliance, and I'm going to show you a couple of cases with the EMA appliance. And it's, um, it's just two plastic trays with harder, harder acrylic, and you've got this, this elastic strap holding the two plastic trays together. It's a very, very nice appliance, and I, I think it's a, it's, it's a smaller appliance than the Somnomed, and I prefer this for some females that are extremely feminine, want something a little smaller uh, in their mouth, and not quite so big. I don't think it lasts quite as long as the Somnomed, and there's, there's some more adjusting you have to do. You have to keep changing these straps. Okay, these straps will lose their elasticity after a while, and you have to keep changing the straps. But you can also change the straps and advance the mandible if you want to. So it's a titratable appliance. You can add acrylic to the lower block, and you can increase the vertical if you want, or you can decrease the vertical. So it's a very nice appliance and lots of tongue room. You want an appliance where there's lots of tongue room. There's lots of tongue room in the Somnomed, lots of tongue room in the EMA. Now that's the TRD that I mentioned, the tongue retraining device. And that looks like quite an unusual appliance. I mean, to be honest, most of my patients, I've just used the mandibular repositioning appliance. I've not used one of these yet. But it's basically designed for a patient who can't wear a repositioning appliance. Now some patients have temporomandibular joint problems to the point where you can't advance the mandible, but it's quite rare. Most patients that have temporomandibular joint problems or no temporomandibular joint problems, you can advance the mandible no problem. But there are patients that you can't do it. So you need to have the TRD, you have to know about it, and you can use it if you want to. So again, the tongue fits into this anterior bulb here. The tongue is held forward by squeezing. So you put the tongue in the, in the bulb, and then you squeeze the bulb, and the tongue stays. The suction keeps the tongue forward. I would imagine your tongue might be a little sore in the morning by keeping it forward all night. But remember, if it's a life-saving device, which is going to prevent snoring and sleep apnea, I mean, this is, certainly, this is certainly worth it. It's good for patients who can't wear repositioning appliances, as I mentioned. It's also good for, for edentulous or periodontally involved patients. So any edentulous or periodontally involved patient, that's another indication for the TRD, tongue retraining device. Now what about CPAP? We're going to talk about CPAP today. And you can see this is a dentist who came to my office. And you can see he's, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's about 350 pounds. And that CPAP device is probably prolonging his life substantially. And you can see he, this is the air compressor here. And on the other hand, he's got the uh, humidifier. Because the air compressor blows air up his nose all night and blows the tongue out of the way and opens up his airway. But this is necessary for him because he's got a lot of fat on his neck which is interfering with the pharyngeal muscles and it's collapsing his airway. So any time that you're a little bit overweight and you've got excess fat in your throat, this, this, this can cause a problem and make it sometimes not make oral appliances be very effective. And so I, he needs that CPAP device. And he needs that humidifier to dry the air because that one of the big problems with that CPAP, CPAP means continuous positive air pressure. Continuous positive air pressure, CPAP. One of the problems with that device is it dries out the nose and dries out the throat. So you have to, he'd have to get on an airplane with a CPAP device and his humidifier and have to go through security. And, and it's kind of a, 
it, it, it's, it's not the best thing for him to have to do. He would much rather be able to carry a little oral appliance around in his briefcase rather than this, but he needs this. Anybody that's, that's, that's overweight, 350 pounds, is probably going to have to have a CPAP. Sometimes we have combinations of the two, and I'll discuss that later. The thing you need to know, and, and there's so many articles on this. I've, I've read so many conflicting articles. But some of the articles I've read is the compliance rate is only 30 to 40% with a CPAP device after 90 days. In some cases, I've seen 50% after 90 days. In some cases, I've seen 30 to 40% after 90 days. But that's not a very high compliance rate. I can tell you with my oral appliances, the compliance rate is very high. It, it's between 95 and 100. I mean, I can count on one hand the number of patients that come back to me and say, I can't wear this. I mean, most patients can wear their oral appliance. Sometimes their oral appliance is not effective in, 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 in fixing the problem because the patient has got other problems, anatomical problems, and many patients refuse to wear the CPAP just at the sight of it. So they go to the hospital, they get the sleep study done, polysomnogram is the, is the hospital sleep study, they get the sleep study done, they're shown the CPAP device, and they say, no way. I mean, if you're an 18-year-old boy and you have uh, sleep apnea, you're not going to put one of those on. You know, younger people do not want to wear that CPAP. And people that don't have severe sleep apnea really object to that. If you're mild sleep apneic and you're not having that many symptoms, you really don't want to go for the CPAP. But as I mentioned to you, if you're high moderate or severe, then those patients, those patients will definitely try the CPAP device and try to wear it. But there's many patients just looking at that refuse. So are those not failures? I mean, there's patients who try it and fail, but there's a lot of patients who look at it and say, no way. So to me, they're a failure also. So the failure rate with CPAP is extremely high. So we do need alternatives. We do need the oral appliance, it's extremely important, and I think dentists really have to get into this. So I'm glad you're watching this presentation because I'm trying to encourage you to learn about the oral appliances, learn about CPAP, learn about surgery, learn about how you have to work with the medical community, learn how to market your practice, and then get out there and help some of these patients. So this is one that, that I don't recommend, but I need to show you different appliances so you can understand why I like certain appliances. This is called a mandibular inclined repositioning splint. So there you can see it. There you can see it, it's fitting all over the upper teeth, it's fitting over, and the lower teeth are fitting into grooves here, and there's a cap on the lower incisors, and there's an air hole in the front, but it's one position. The patient just bites into one position. Now, if you happen to find the right position where the airway is open, that's great, but what if that's the wrong position? What if you have to titrate that appliance? What if you have to adjust that appliance? You can't adjust it, it's one piece. So I don't like an appliance that you can't adjust. Here you can see an incisal ramp that hangs down. And I actually have an appliance that, that's similar to that that we use for patients who brux and grind their teeth at night, but not to prevent snoring and sleep apnea. So there's a breathing hole, but the, big, the breathing hole in the anterior, the di big disadvantage is not titratable. So I do not like a one-piece appliance that you can't adjust. Because one of the things we're finding is that we'll put the appliance in, they'll still be snoring a little bit, the, the overnight sleep study will show they still have sleep apnea, and you have to adjust the appliance. And the way we adjust a mandibular repositioning appliance is to turn the screws or change the straps, depending on the appliance, and move the lower jaw gently forward, slowly. If you move it too quickly, you can cause TMJ problems. If you move it slowly, you've got a much better chance of being successful. Now the Clearway appliance is, is an appliance actually developed in Canada at the University of British Columbia, Dr. Alan Lowe, an orthodontist, a very, very famous guy, one of the original founders of the, of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. It was a different name when it started, but that's the name of the organization now. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a two-piece appliance, and um, it advances the mandible. And you can advance the mandible up to 11 millimeters. It does allow for lateral movements, which is good for bruxers and good for the TMJ. 
the, it has a, a high rec screw in the pallet, okay? And the high rec screw, when you turn that high rec screw, the lower jaw moves forward. So you can move the lower jaw up to 11 millimeters forward. So that's very adjustable. Um, you can add, you can increase the vertical. You can see those posterior pads back here. You can add acrylic back here if you want to. Dr. Lowe really recommends that you only have about a two or three millimeters inner incisal opening on his appliance. And you can see there's only a very little bit of an opening there. In this one case, it looks like he's got an anterior deprogrammer on the appliance. You can see a little acrylic on the lower incisors there. And so that's like an anterior deprogrammer on the lower incisors. So that helps prevent the patient from hopefully bruxing and grinding at night. So anyway, this is, um, so this is an appliance which is uh, very popular in Canada and, uh, and, 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 and worldwide. But the only thing I didn't like about it when I initially used it was the, was the Hyrex screw on the, on the upper I thought would maybe interfere a little bit with encroaching on the tongue a little bit. And so um, the Somnomed and the um, EMA are clear in the palate. There's nothing on the palate. But this is a very effective appliance. I mean, this appliance has worked very effectively. I think Dr. Lowe told me that some 36,000 people have used this appliance. He's also got some excellent articles showing that when you use a mandibular repositioning appliance, and this one in particular, you reduce blood pressure. So that's very effective. I mean, it's really nice to know that the appliances are, are reducing the sleep apnea, and they're also reducing blood pressure. So that is an appliance you can certainly think about.